Hi there and welcome to Design Patterns and Solid Principles with Java. My name is Robert Kohani. I will be your guide for this course and I will walk you through the mechanics of a carefully selected list of important design patterns and design principles in the context of simple console applications. Before we jump into the course, let me talk a bit about myself. My name is Robert Kohani. I am a full-stack software and DevOps engineer from Hungary with a primary focus on Java-based backend technologies. I have been in the IT industry for almost 10 years now and over the years I had dealings with countless technologies and frameworks. Out of all these, I was most impressed and productive with Spring and Angular. For the last couple of years I have been working as a software developer mentor at a programming bootcamp called CodeCool, helping students becoming junior software developers themselves, teaching people about simple and advanced programming concepts alike, with great success, having lots of fun, while learning a tremendous amount myself about code, people and the technological stack between them. If you want to know more about me, or if you have remarks, questions about the course itself, feel free and find me at kohanirobert.github.io. Let's go over the contents of the course quickly. The course consists of six sections in total. In the first section, we are going to look at the template method design pattern by introducing a sample application, which we will carry with us throughout the whole course. We will explore example scenarios and problems and apply the template method pattern by refactoring the code base as a solution to these. We will draw a comparison between using this design pattern and alternative solutions while learning about object-oriented principles and see why favoring composition over inheritance is important by code examples. In the next section we are going to continue exploring design patterns by learning about the singleton pattern. We will introduce new requirements with regards to the sample application which will result in complications that we are going to solve by successfully applying the singleton pattern. We are going to take a deeper look at solid principles and their connection to the singleton and other design patterns in general, focusing primarily on the importance of the dependency inversion principle. At the end of the section, we will discuss best practices and alternatives again with detailed code examples. In the third section, we will be looking at the strategy pattern in depth. We will further improve the code base of the sample application by defining new features, requirements and see the mechanics of using this pattern through refactoring. We will see how being able to use this pattern can be a great asset when building flexible modular applications. We will learn about how using this pattern connects to solid design, primarily focusing on the open closed and the Liskov substitution principles. In the end, we will draw a comparison between this and the template method pattern and see how you could use these together effectively by examples. In section 4 we are going to continue with the factory design pattern. We will be looking at different variations of this pattern by looking at their benefits and drawbacks each and comparing them with coding samples. We are going to update and modularize the sample project to better understand what are the driving factors behind design patterns and why adhering to solid principles is really important. We will discuss and see firsthand what is the interface segregation principle and how you can connect it to the abstract factory design pattern. During the next fifth section, we will focus on the facade design pattern, first by identifying its uses in the sample codebase. We will see when and why to use this pattern and also learn about its mechanics. Most importantly, in this section, we will introduce certain requirements that will require us to update the example project's structure to shift to a microservice-based architecture eventually. We will see first-hand examples of how microservices and the facade pattern are connected. And at the end of this section, we will analyze what kind of effects adhering to solid principles had on the design of our facade implementation and what benefits we can reap in general when focusing on these in our designs. The sixth and last section explores how a regular system can be migrated to the cloud and in connection with this the facade and the strangler patterns while focusing on how solid principles help this process. First we will discuss how our regular system with its traditional design can be made cloud compatible and what kind of cloud services we will need for this. 
We are going to refactor the app in a step-by-step -step manner by leveraging using simple techniques like environment variables as a mechanism to achieve a high degree of modularity and see how dependency inversion is connected to all of this yet again. We will discuss how to split a monolithic application into microservices by taking only small incremental steps instead of an unmanageable Big Bang refactoring. Finally, we will use the circuit breaker and cache aside cloud design patterns to demonstrate how to solve the resiliency and scalability issues. The overall goal of the course is for you to be able to see and learn about the connection between patterns, principles, refactoring, clean code and all the things and concepts relating to good design. Instead of going through a list of patterns in isolation and looking at simple examples with little to no relation to the real world, in this course you will see how to interconnect design patterns and see by example their real benefits and drawbacks. Ultimately, you will understand the benefits and be able to create good designs yourself. As I have mentioned, the same sample application is used for demonstration in each section in each video. The project's code base is getting more and more complex with each video as we will move forward. For each change we are going to make together, there is a detailed step-by-step -step examination in the videos and the companion code is available for you via GitHub. Following the exact steps taken as shown in the videos are recommended, but it is even more recommended that you explore the code base by yourself to get familiar with it over time. To follow the course, you should have a little bit of Java under your belt and have the Java Development Kit installed on your system along with an IDE, preferably IntelliJ IDEA, as I will be using this in the videos. Exact requirements, tools and how to use them are discussed in their respective sections in detail. During the course, you will be exposed to using Maven, Git and other tools required to build, run, configure or navigate in the project. But again, don't be afraid, no prior knowledge of these are expected. For the sample application that we will be relying on throughout the course, we will use a few third-party tools which we will only require as to run the project. But again, instructions are included in each respective video where you will first encounter these. Okay, I hope you are all set and ready to go. Let's get started with the course.